Hi everybody, this week a hand-carved holiday tray. Hey, this week we're going to get started on the first of maybe a couple different holiday projects uh, because as our family gets together we do a gift exchange. Now the little guys and the nieces and nephews, they get regular nice stuff, but the adults have a $20 limit and we have quite a bit of fun kind of bartering and exchanging who gets stuck with what. But I always like to bring something homemade to the party and for the last three or four years since I've kind of started up the wood shop, uh, I'll make something and donate it, but I gotta keep it less than 20 bucks. So we're gonna do a serving tray, a holiday serving tray. And I've got to start with a couple of pieces of select pine, three quarter inch pine. Now this is the stuff that's got no knots in it. It's got a pretty even grain. Uh, it's got even density and it's actually going to be better for, uh, it's a little harder than the typical soft pine that you're going to see for construction materials. But I like that because we're going to try something new here on the Family Woodworker channel. So uh, I said 20 bucks. Each one of these boards is about seven dollars and I'm going to need more than one I think to do the project. Uh, but still $14 leaves me a little extra so I bought a couple of these little door or cabinet uh, handles or drawer front handles and they're going to look really good I think on the uh, two sides of the serving tray. The other thing I said we're going to try something I haven't done. The other thing we're going to do is carve a design on the bottom middle of that particular serving tray and I thought a very simple little Christmas tree would work out really well, but I've never done carving before. So uh, I'm not going to include these in the cost of the project, but I bought a couple of basic tools uh, from Germany actually. These are nice little wood carving tools. Uh, they run anywhere between 20 bucks and maybe 30 or 32 dollars a piece. This was the cheaper of the two. Uh, so I'm going to keep these in the collection, but I want to give this a try and carve out uh, a cool little Christmas tree in the middle of that serving tray. And so this is dimensional 1x4 trim wood, which means it's 3.5 inches wide, but I need them all exactly 18 inches long, so you set up a little stop block next to the miter saw, and it gives you exactly the same cuts each and every time. The other thing that I noticed is that the the wood, when you get it directly from the lumber yard, is never exactly flush on the edges and you can't have any gaps between the wood for glue up. So I just ran them through the table saw to give me a really clean edge here and now I'm fairly confident that the glue up is going to go well. The other thing that I did is I flipped the boards around back and forth to make it look like all the grain lined up and that worked out really well. And so. <laughs> I always use too much glue. Uh, uh, if, if you're going to be staining the surface, you really have to be careful with, with glue because if the glue gets on the surface, even if you try to wipe it off quickly, it prevents the stain from soaking in. But uh, I just needed to wipe the glue off. I'm not staining this, uh, this particular project. So uh, got to be careful with the glue. You don't want to use too much. And I definitely did. So after we get it uh, dried and unclamped here, I've got to do a little bit more trimming. I want the overall width of the tray to be 12 inches and uh, that three and a half inch lumber put together obviously gave me enough but I had to trim off a little bit off both sides. And also even with all the extra care that I took to make sure the pieces lined up it's not really completely clean so we just ran it through the saw one more time to clean up those those edges. And so now we're, <laughs> we're into the stuff that I've never done before. Now, I, I don't mean the drawing part. That's all kindergarten stuff, fond memories of drawing. Uh, but it's the using of the carving tools. So I have a couple of different tools I talked about. And I also have this safety glove, which is impregnated with steel wire. Now, I, this is actually a kitchen glove for me when I'm using a, a uh, a lot of sharp knives and I'm, I'm doing a lot of work in the kitchen, I will wear this glove, but you can get this at a restaurant supply store, specialty wood store, but that steel wire really prevents the, the blade from, from penetrating into the skin. So I was holding the board in a couple of strange positions and the glove came in handy. 
So all you're doing first here is with that straight knife, cutting as deeply as you can into the drawing. And there's a good reason for that, because when we go to gouge out the material, you want the wood to stop gouging out at the edge, and you need to cut that line so that you have the edge and that the wood won't tear out any further. And at this point, this was the scary part for me. I've never done this work. I, I don't really have much of a technique. All I'm trying to do is remove material on the inside of the drawing because ultimately I'm going to fill it up with epoxy. So I found, and I, I watched a couple YouTube videos to help me out, is to get started on, say, the bottom of the drawing. Take your time, of course. And once you have the bottom carved out, you can work from the opposite angle and gouge material out towards the uh, open area that you just created. And that helps prevent additional tear out because the, the tool will work and gouge out the wood up to the point where you had previously gouged out, if that makes any sense. And ultimately, I got to this result. Now, I didn't need the inside of this uh, drawing to be super, super clean, but I wanted the depth to be uh, as equal as possible because I was going to fill this up with epoxy. So with a little extra trimming, it was time to put in the epoxy. And uh, <laughs> is it just me that has problems putting on rubber gloves? But So this can be one of a number of different epoxy products that you pick, and I've mixed mine. But I'm using some alcohol-based dyes here that you can get from pretty much any craft store. And if you mix the blue and the yellow together, you'll get green. I'm also adding some glitter, and I've never tried this before, but I kind of like the idea of the green tinted epoxy with the green glitter. And I'm anxious to see what it looks like when we're all done, but at this point, you want to overfill the cutout area a little bit. And I'm using a popsicle stick to make sure that the epoxy gets into all the corners, but it's, it's actually gonna flow because I put in a little too much, it'll flow outside of the lines, and I want that. So our little construction guys will make sure that it stays untouched while it dries. Now I'm just gonna cut the sides to this tray. And I'm also cutting a 30 degree bevel on the top and then cutting them on the 45 so that they all fit together like a picture frame. And so before I put the sides together, I want to finish sand the top of the board. And I was using 220 and then 320 paper here on the power sander. And I don't show it, but I finished it off with a hand sanding block at 400. And that gets it pretty smooth so that when I wipe it with a wet rag, it looks really good just like that. The other thing that I'm going to do is temporarily put in some screws around the perimeter of the tray. So I've got these glued up right now and the screws are going to hold it together as clamps. But I want to replace the screws with this quarter inch walnut dowel. I thought that would be a great little accent piece to this tray. And so I'm cutting them all about an inch and a half or a little bit longer. And after I remove the screws, we drill a quarter inch hole and then I'll put a little glue down in the hole. I'll wipe a little glue on the actual walnut dowel, and then we'll just hammer those in. Now, I don't think the glue is ever gonna fail on the, the perimeter of this tray, but you know, I thought the dowels were a nice little accent piece, and it's never gonna come apart now. Little flush cut saw will cut the dowels off, and then a little finished sanding on the side. And this will be easy to do. We don't have to worry about sanding the inside of the tray anymore. And those two bevel cuts that I made on that top part of that tray perimeter at 30 degrees puts a nice little double angle on the top of that. It, it really looked good. Now I had a couple choices. I wound up going with spray lacquer, gloss lacquer, because I wanted the, the nature of the gloss finish to really allow for the sparkle in that tree to stand out. 
and you'll see the picture after it dries. In fact, we'll show it here. You can see the glitter kind of pop out at you. It was a cool effect. And so here's a little bit of the finished shot, the dowels on the side and on the ends. It really looks great. And those handles that I bought for a couple bucks a piece, trim it out and that gets me right to that $20 price tag. It was a great project, a lot of fun. I really encourage the entry level woodworker to give this a try. You know, keep it in the family or what a great gift. Uh, thanks for watching the video. We guys hope you have a great holiday. Take care. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for the video. We really hope you liked it. And we also hope you subscribe to the channel. Take care. And hey, a little bonus footage for good measure. So here's a little bit of a cautionary tale. I was working with the belt sander trying to grind down another epoxy project and the belt sander grabbed on to the plastic and it launched forward and I was holding on to the edge of the board with my hand instead of putting it in a vise like I should have and the belt sander just instantly took the skin off so when you're working with power tools take all the safety precautions I should have worn a big heavy glove on this hand or I should have had it in a vise uh, or my bench vise and you'll avoid problems like this so be extra careful with power tools so let's talk a little bit about some bonus footage so this is the finished product that you're going to see in the video but surprise surprise we tried it once before and I screwed up on the amount of hardener to add to the epoxy and it after a week and a half it's still kind of soft so we gave up on this in fact, me trying to grind this off led to my other injury, uh, which we talked about earlier. So, you know, uh, even, even, <laughs> even with good intentions on the Family Word Worker channel, uh, we screw things up. But, you know, a second attempt came out really, really great.